perhaps a surprise decision to some economists who were pricing in another rate hike there. Do you, uh, do you agree with Sanusi's rationale be behind leaving rates at 12%? Uh, thank you, Samantha. I think, I mean, the market basically agrees with um, the governor and the, and the MPC for leaving the NPR constant. Um, by leaving the NPR constant, leaving the CRR constant, they're giving the market an opportunity, the capital market in this instance, to see, uh, to have a bit of a recovery, perhaps towards the end of the year. Given um, the significance of the uh, change in the target band, let's focus on the Naira. Um, he's changed the target band to 155 plus or minus 3%, uh, considered a modest devaluation. The CBN clearly sees itself having enough firepower in order to uh, defend the currency, given the vulnerability of the economy to perhaps a slight, uh, slightly lower oil price. Do you think this modest devaluation was the right move? I think so. I mean, I think what the central bank did was just to um, align with the realities of the market. The Naira technically had been devalued before the official announcement yesterday by the central bank that it was moving the mid-band to 155. The interbank market had already priced that in, and uh, buyers of FX have already realized as well that they needed to pay more for FX. The reality is that Nigeria is still... Uh, a mono economy depending only on oil price for the bulk of our foreign earnings. So whenever f there are uh, challenges to uh, the oil price, you expect us to have challenges with our foreign exchange rate. Up to 80% of food and beverages uh, stocks are, um, they, they cost are priced in dollars and they import uh, quite a lot of their, uh, you know, their goods. Given that, we saw the food and beverages sector actually rally yesterday. Going forward, though, uh, are you concerned about the rising cost for this sector given the devaluation in the Naira? Yes. I mean, any importer or any major uh, operator in the food and beverages sector that imports so much will be concerned about the costs of Forex. Um, naturally, what happens in this industry is that they pass on those costs to the, uh, to the end users. And most of the end users in this system, the demand for these products are pretty inelastic. So I just, uh, I, I expect that the cost will be passed over to the end users and business will continue as usual. I'm not sure that it's going to have an impact or a major impact on the profitability of the companies in the food and beverages sector. Overall, looking at the, the markets yesterday, of course, the rate decision came in after the markets closed. We saw it fall back slightly there. Volumes are coming in slightly lower, just under $10 million. Uh, in the top tier space, Zenith and First Bank fell back, but I know these two top banks in Nigeria are your uh, favorite stocks. Just run us through the investment case for uh, First Bank and Zenith. First Bank and Zenith right now, they offer, we think, upsides in the neighborhood of 100% and 50% respectively. Uh, First Bank is still practically the largest bank in the country. Unfortunately, it's been under a bit of pressure um, in the market lately because of investors that have been trying to get out of the market. So the price has really uh, been depressed. Uh, based on the earnings of the companies of First Bank and Zenith Bank, we think they have huge potentials to still pay good dividends and to still have capital appreciation when the market eventually recovers. So we think fundamentally they are very solid and they are investments that long-term investors should actually look at. As you say, upside potential for First Bank of up to 100% year pricing in. It's sitting just below 10 naira at this point in time. Do you, do you feel that the, uh, the sell-off in the banking sector, especially in the top end side of things, is losing momentum? Sorry, I didn't get that question, Samantha. Do, do you think that the sell-off in the top tier space is starting to lose momentum? Well, I'm not so sure. I think right now that um, investors are still looking at the at, at the major banks in the sector. I mean, we've seen GT Bank actually uh, gain the most in that sector in the last few weeks because of the corporate governance, because of the uh, level of confidence that investors have in that bank. The challenges with a stock like First Bank is that it has so much liquidity and it's one of the few stocks that investors try to latch onto whenever they need to raise some money and that has impacted on the stock. But we think fundamentally that is going to change soon as soon as there is a, a bit of recovery in the market. It seems uh, big cap stocks are, are all on your buy list, and Goti Cement being one of them. It's now uh, trading back above 100, 100 Naira, uh, but still a negative return there of 16%. It is, of course, the biggest listed stock in Nigeria, the biggest cement stock in Nigeria. Is this a case of just benefiting from the scale that they're able to realize versus the smaller players? 
Yes, that's one. And I think the other bit, apart from the increased capacity that Dangote Cement has been able to bring on stream, and they expect to bring on stream before the end of, of the year as well, is that the level of efficiency has, has improved. And uh, you have to also appreciate the fact that the company has grown, so it's getting to learn more and is able to make use of economics of scale. So the efficiency levels are improving, the capacity has improved as well, and we also think that the demand is actually there that they can meet. So I mean, all they need to do is produce and distribute, and they will still make uh, good profits. So we think investors are going to look at Dangote Cement. Fundamentally, we think um, they are they are not uh, the earnings are not yet fully priced in, and we think there is still a significant upside. That's why it's one of our top picks.